hello students uh, welcome back so we are entering into a new module today okay so today we will see another important class of pump it is entirely different from all the pumps uh, that we studied before okay that is uh, called the suction pump suction pump so as the name suggests uh, this is a pump working on the basis of suction suction is two type one is absorption ab s o r p a t absorption or adsorption adsorption so these are two physical phenomena uh, both physical and chemical uh, effects are there in absorption and adsorption okay so uh, both adsorption and absorption phenomena are made use in the working of suction pump okay so it is a physical and chemical process by which one substance becomes attached to another substance so here uh, getting uh, okay substance become attached to you can see this line attachment can be uh, either on the surface or can be into the bulk of the material this attachment can be either on the bulk of the material or on the surface so it can be a surface phenomena or it can be bulk phenomena if it is a bulk phenomena we call it absorption and if it is a surface phenomena we call it adsorption okay and uh, keep in mind that both this phenomena are made use in the working of a suction pump so uh, you can remember the simple uh, phenomena like uh, putting a chalk okay chalk piece in, a, in a ink ink bottle so what initially happens is the ink is absorbed uh, by the chalk okay. where it's a bulk phenomena bulk phenomena and in certain other cases uh, uh, if you put a certain material uh, say like uh, zeolite or uh, uh, sodium it is called aluminum silicate it is spongy type material if you put in a hydrogen chamber so what happens uh, where is on the zeolite surface hydrogen gas get absorbed okay so this is another example uh, so so both phenomena are made use and uh, what is actually happening in absorption uh, we can formally define absorption ab absorption is a physical or chemical process in which atoms molecules or ions enter some bulk phase a bulk phase here can be liquid or a solid okay and uh, secondly in absorption the absorption in uh, for example in absorption absorb ab okay keep in mind ab i am saying because both words uh, look very similar in absorption absorbent distributes the material it captures throughout the bulk okay and uh, adsorbent only distributes it to the surface so that is the difference between absorption and adsorption okay. and adsorption is the addition of atoms or ions or molecules to a gas liquid or dissolved solid to a surface so this process creates a film of the adsorbate on the surface of the adsorbate this process differs from absorption in which the adsorbate is dissolved by or permeates a liquid or solid adsorption is a surface phenomena whereas absorption is a whole volume phenomena about a bulk phenomena So I think the difference is clear, but both phenomena are made use. In so this is uh, how a absorption pump looks like. A cylinder, you can see, is a steel cylinder. Inside the steel cylinder, uh, the material, absorbing material or absorbing material, is filled. Okay, filled, and this is usually inserted in a liquid nitrogen chamber. So you can see an outer chamber here, 
usually this cylinder is immersed in a liquid nitrogen chamber and this will be filled with some liquid nitrogen or other liquid hydrogen like materials and the temperature is lowered and this edge you can see this this edge is connected to the vacuum chamber okay so what actually happening is uh, from the vacuum chamber gas uh, get adsorbed or absorbed within the material the material you can't see it is inside is what is the material we will see very shortly so that material is called zeolites okay the name is zeolites so as the temperature goes down as the material get cooled down and down and down temperature get lowered to sub kelvin temperatures okay below 0 degree celsius maybe minus 70 degrees celsius minus uh, 80 degrees celsius minus 100 degrees minus 100 degrees celsius so on so when temperature goes down its adsorbing or absorbing capacity increases okay the phenomena is the converse okay temperature goes down its capacity increases sorry capacity increases so that the gas get uh, absorbed or absorbed from the chamber okay chamber is not shown here okay so chamber you have to connect here. so uh, there is a rough uh, working uh, so this was introduced by devar okay devar james devar may know knowing he is a dutch physicist cryogenic scientist you can say james devar so <coughs> and uh, as i told you it contains a stainless steel container it is filled with uh, what is called activated charcoal or activated zeolites okay its technical name is shown here sodium aluminum silicate or calcium aluminum silicate uh, so what is special about zeolite uh, is special that it is for a spongy like material lot of ca- cavity inside it just like a sponge when you uh, put a sponge in water you know it has a high capacity to absorb water here it is also a sponge like material uh, it has enough ca- ca- cavity inside it uh, cavities like a bee uh, okay so you must have seen uh, so uh, so this layer is structure it is a magnified view of a zeolite you can see lot of cavity here so a similar uh, structure is processed by zeolites so when temperature goes down is absorbing capacity increases so water can be easily retained within these cavities okay so that is happening so adsorption takes place by either physis option or chemis option physis option involves chemical action so chemi- physical also uh, physical forces physical action and chemis option involves chemical action and chemical Uh, uh, activity is very important. So you can see the one of the important value, the effective surface area of such zeolites are 2500 meters per square. You see, what is the meaning of this uh, value? One gram of this material will offer you, provide you 2500 meters per square. It is very tremendously high value. One gram for offering such an area. the material should be highly spongy uh, highly cavity abundant like that. and uh, another interesting feature is the capacity is increased by cooling it with the liquid nitrogen so when temperature goes to high, too low value the sorbing capacity adsorbing capacity okay, or, or holding capacity of gas is increased so these are some features okay. so here is the zeolite So what is zeolites? Basically, they are sodium aluminum silicates. Okay, this chemical composition is done. Yeah, hexagonal tetrahedral uh, structures they usually possess. This is how a bulk uh, zeolite looks like. This is non-hydrate zeolite, and the top one is hydrate zeolite. So what is the difference? Uh, in hydrate zeolites, we can't see any cavity, but you make uh, dehydration. This is usually done by keeping zeolites uh, in certain baking units, furnaces. So when it is kept in furnaces, this 2H2 will be lost. 
So that is my uh, dehydration. Once the dehydration takes place, enough cavity is uh, generated in the bulk of the cellular material. So that cavity we are finding application in our pump. Okay. So that cavity we can make use in holding gases from the vacuum chamber. Holding gases from the vacuum chamber. Okay. So uh, some other important properties. Uh, what are the properties of your lights? They have a large surface area for it that we have seen, uh, around 2500 meters square foot. Now. Okay. They are porous aluminum cages. Porous in the sense that they're full of holes, so their holding capacity is very high. They possess three dimensional tetrahedral structure. And they have vast number of cavities. And dehydrated crystal is having a honeycomb structure. So that is structure we I showed you earlier that is called honeycomb structure and full of voids which are previously been filled with water. So water is removed when we put in bake, baking oven. Okay. This is usually uh, uh, de inbuilt in a laboratory. Right? For example, if you have a sorption pump in your lab, you have a baking unit. For repeatedly you will be putting this your lights uh, within that uh, baking unit and uh, you have to rehydrate them frequently. Okay then you can reuse this material inside your uh, suction uh, These cavities help to absorb large amount of gas and cool with liquid nitrogen. So cooling uh, improves or enhances its sorbent capacity and heating reduces uh, its uh, cooling, uh, holding capacity. Okay. So both phenomena are very useful. The reactivation of sorbent material is done by baking in a suitable box. Okay. So these are the functions of zeolites. And the tetrahedral structure is shown here. Uh, so how this looks shapes. And uh, this is given here. So they are structurally zeolites. Uh, how cavities are formed in a zeolite is shown here. Okay. So this is a single unit. So it's a cavity. There will be millions of such units in a zeolite bulk sample. So that can be used. And uh, this this is how it looks like. Okay, you can see the portion where it is fitted to the vacuum chamber. Cross sectional view you can see. And in uh, certain sorption pumps, uh, there will be such a series of units, okay, not single one. There will be many such units, and uh, you can see here, many such units. Uh, this port is connected to the vacuum chamber. And initially one of them is kept open and other is kept closed. Okay. And uh, you will start cooling this uh, uh, cylinder by using your cryo units, cryo units. So what happens? All the gas from the chamber will come to this particular cylinder. This one is closed. Okay. This one is closed and this one is open. So what happens? Pumping goes on. The, the gas is removed to this chamber. Okay. So when this is saturated, that means on when all the porous ports, porous uh, uh, locations are filled, pumping will slow down. That you can see from this gauge, especially gauge. Pumping will slow down. So what is done? This cylinder is closed and this is open. Valve here will be open and the pumping now starts to this chamber. This end. Again, gas will come like this and go to this particular uh, cylinder. Okay. And uh, this process will go on until this cylinder is saturated or filled with gas. So that can be observed from this uh, particular gauge. Okay. You can see, you can monitor this gauge and uh, uh, see, uh, you can see the pressure decreasing. Once the needle comes static, that means uh, saturation happens, then you have to remove the cylinder and connect another one. So this is a two unit system and you can have a multi unit system according to your pumping requirements. Okay. Uh, so this is how mm, roughly the working principle of a sorption pump. And uh, usually cryogenic temperatures are required for the functioning of a sorption pump. Corrosion temperature it usually works. So uh, this is uh, the working principle of a sorption pump. Hope uh, you understood the working very simply.
and uh, with this moment, uh, let us close this moment. Thank you.